a thousand tongues is not enough to quantify, to qualify, to magnify, to show the extent of your goodness, your faithfulness, your mercy over our lives as a family, as individuals, as a church. You have been great. You have been wonderful. You have been glorious. Father, you from the depth of our soul. We glorify, we magnify, we thank you, Lord. Seven months is passing away. Our life is just beginning to glow. We glorify you, Lord. Thank you and thank you forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have given thanks. A thankful heart will always be a graceful life. Let every breath of yours begin to appreciate God. You have table before the Lord. Your request for the month of July, God has made all to happen. Everyone you have prayed for, for salvation, for healing, for deliverance, God is honoring your prayer. In a moment, wave your hands and say, Lord, thank you for answering all my prayers. Thank you for making them a testimony in my life. I thank you again and again. You are worthy of all my praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Will you take, turn to your neighbor and say, welcome to this last day of service in the month of July. I know God will do you good. There's too many good things for in stock for you today. It's your turn to prosper. It's your turn to be blessed. It's your turn to be a blessing. It's your turn to be blessed. And it's your turn to be a blessing. Thank God for your life. Hallelujah. Put those hands together for Jesus. Come on, give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Please take your seat in God's presence. Today, we are looking again at walking in financial dominion, part four. And especially, we are focusing on the healing banquet. Somebody say, what relationship does financial teaching have to do with healing? Hold your peace. You will suddenly discover they are divinely interrelated. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. You shall remember it is the Lord your God that giveth thee power to get wealth. Forgetfulness is one of the reasons why we are denied our divine apportionments. When you remember it is the Lord, you will cease from your labor. When you remember the source of your wealth is God, you will cease from your struggles. When you remember the source of power for wealth is God, you will cease from life mismanagement. When you remember the Lord is your source for financial wealth, you will cease from financial mismanagement. You shall remember Deuteronomy chapter 8 at verse 18. It is the Lord that giveth the power to get wealth. And he's doing that for a purpose. That he may establish, say establish, his covenant which he swore unto your fathers as it is this day. In our Wednesday services, we check the story of the patriarchs. David, Abraham, Job, Solomon, all of them sworn verdict of covenant wealth manifested in their lives. People of God, we are not situational believers. We are covenant creatures. We are coming from a sure foundation 
so sure that times and seasons can derope or deny its effect. Your life in God is intertwined in an unbreakable covenant, unsurpassing covenant. An understanding of your root will link you up with the root. Your root, R O O T, will link you up with the root, R O U T E, to assess your packages of divine provisions. You are not a climatic candidate. You are a covenant child. Your condition is not your portion. It's just a temporary occurrence. Your condition is not your portion. It's a temporal occurrence. Your financial dominion is God's priority. And so for us to be able to walk in that financial dominion, we have traveled a long way from the beginning of this month. Checking and cross-checking with the book of life, the Holy Bible, the custodian of the mind of God. The box where the secret of life is hidden. The stable where those who are hungry for a better life can partake of raw materials to turn their life around. The secrets of God in the book reveals his recommended covenant to move God's people out of the shackles of poverty and lack into an environment of sufficiency that they cannot com completely utilize till they live full on the earth. So it becomes important that we should have a good understanding of our covenant obligations. Giving and receiving is the platform of the covenant. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. I'm the Lord that give you power to get well, but it's on the condition of a platform, the platform of relationship. And we've been examining the keys. What are the avenues for divine priorities in giving? If you must give in order to receive, if until you give, there is no receiving, then we must have covenant sense to know how to divinely apportion, or if I may put it in a common day language, invest our little resources to engage the covenant and provoke a visitation that is an all round manifestation. We are not called to be philanthropists. We are not called to be socialists. We are called to be covenant men and women. And covenant has terms. What are those giving priorities? Your tight. Your tight. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 10. Verse 8 says, all of you, you have robbed me. Robbed me. If God says you have robbed me, and the Bible says the eyes of the Lord runs to and fro, so if God can see you where you are, who you are, the pastor doesn't know you, but God knows you. You have robbed me. He said, hey, 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 God, take it easy. How have we robbed you? He said, in tithes and in offerings. You stole from me. What did we steal? The offerings and the tithes. All you nation. I won't read that next statement. I jump to verse 10. Read it when you get home. He said, but I advise you, provoke the covenant. Bring ye all the tithes and the offerings into the storehouse and prove me because I'm a covenant keeping God. My covenant will lie not break. Neither will I alter anything that has proceeded from my mouth. 
You bring the tithe to the storehouse and prove me if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing and then rebuke devourers. So healing banquet is part of covenant exclusive preserve. Some are sowing seeds. They don't know how to reap the blessings. Some are giving in the covenant. They don't understand that the returns is not always financial. And so even though they're in the covenant, they are still suffering the effect of uncovenanted people. Bring the tithes. And the offerings. Offerings? Yes. Worship offering. That shall not come before me empty-handed. You don't have respect for God when you are going to the house of God with an empty hand. It's lack of respect. Many of you, you don't go to a pastor with an empty hand. But do you know when pastor is going to pray, we say in Jesus' name. You say in Jesus' name. I can't pray in my name. Now the name of the one I'm going to use to change your condition, you didn't respect him. You are wasting your money with the pastor. Because he won't answer you. And pastor can't make God answer prayers. When the covenant is broken, every process is broken. You come to church with an empty hand, but you didn't forget to put food in your belly. You took hot dog before you came this morning. <laughs> Thou shalt not come before me empty. Deuteronomy 16 verse 16. What are the giving priorities? Kingdom promotion. Giving. Giving towards promoting the cost of the kingdom of God. We want to do evangelism. Yes, I have a seed to sow. We are printing handbills. Yes, I have a seed to sow. I was in Port Harcourt for three years at a go, one time, two and a half years at a go. One lady in the church took over the printing of all our handbills throughout my stay there. Maybe that's what he was doing before I came. I didn't know. But when I came there, she came to my office. Anytime you are printing handbills, I pay for it, no matter the quantity. And God upheld her life. And she broke free and prospered on every side. Dangerous favors. Dangerous escapes. Dangerous healings and deliverances. That is kingdom promotion. Don't wait till they announce anything. If you love God, show it. Somebody there is sitting on a chair that it has turned. One side has turned. Look at the chair you are sitting on. You know why you are sitting on the turn one? Change it. Or carry it home. We can't come to your house and find a, a turn chair there. True or false? Mm -hmm. Kingdom promotion giving. The next one, giving to your parents. Some of us are very fast at killing our parents. So, so the parents have died. The man has died. The mother has died, and you thought you are free. You are not free. You must have another parent that represents them. Why? Because when you give them the venison they love, they, they invoke parental blessing on your life. You see, there is this. Uh, um, uh, when you go to school to be a medical doctor, you don't only study human part, they make you study every other thing that will make your study of human part complete. There is, the, there is the main cause and there is the subsidiary causes. Without it, you are not a graduate. Did you get what I'm talking about? So when you come to God, there are many departments of your life that must go pari passu. You do it here and here and here and here so you can appear as a complete Heavenly, buoyant, blessed man. 
Your completeness is in obeying every detail of the word of God. Don't think there's anyone that cannot, must not be obeyed. Everyone must be obeyed. Give to your parents. He said they didn't take care of me. God's, God's instruction is not conditional. She doesn't like me. It's because she has not swallowed the venison. My brother is here. There is no day they talk that my father doesn't send a word of blessing my way. He doesn't need my money. He's a prospered man. In those days, his house used to be the best in town because it's a four-story building that has an open veranda at the roof. When you build that kind of a thing in a village, you are a village champion. <laughs> so so it's, 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 it's comfortable. He doesn't need one dime from me, but it must keep flowing to him. And he will look at me and say, nobody can kill you. You will not die. The way God blesses Oyedepo, God will bless you. The blessing of a parent comes from the bosom of your bath. Any culture that says you should turn your back against your parents is the reason why circumstance is killing you. Honor your father and your mother, whether they like you or not. That it may be well with you, Ephesians chapter 6. And that your life may be long, well and prolonged. You live well and live long. That is connected by covenant through the mouth of your parents. Everybody may be blessing you, but when you miss parental blessing, there's a loophole somewhere. Don't throw your parents to old people's home and then you are living like a fatherless, motherless son or daughter in town. This is covenant. This is not civilization. This is scriptures. This is the part of the Patricks that made them formidable time, formidable men and women in their time, unkillable, indestructible. Circumstances couldn't mess them up because they were divinely guarded with the forces of the covenant. They are not playing games. They are living lives. Honor your father and your mother. No, no, no. Hey, here, here, Dave. Talking to your, your father. Say, Dave, uh, come here, Dave. Uh, shut up, Dave. Uh. Before the Lord, that's dishonor. Your father is living in your house and he's supposed to be paying rent to you. And you want to live longer than him. You are breaking covenant. Please, let's go into the Bible and learn scriptural sense. Because he are the light of the world. When you mingle with them, you disappear with them. When you stand out, they have respect for you, for what happens in your life. Glory to God. Amen. Giving to the poor, don't look away from those who don't have. Have respect for their position and help them to find their feet. You will never lose your feet. Amen. Giving for the good of humanity in form of charity. We are going to be a blessing to this community. To a point that the governor of New York will come here to appreciate all of you. Yeah. Every time we gather now, they know that there's a strong team around here. So they come around. Yesterday they came around. Representative of the council came around to just greet us and see how we are doing. And we give them a little shot of what we do. Glory to God. That's how to be relevant to life. Not me, myself, and I. You eat alone, you die alone. You sleep alone, you die alone. You live alone, you die alone. Why must you die alone? King are always going with crowds. You never see a man called king and he's moving alone. 
and he redeemed you to be a king to reign on the earth so align yourself with your destiny and begin to flow in the fullness of covenant plan you won't miss your blessing Amen. giving to the prophets to the ministers of the gospel why not because they need your money but because you need the grace of God at work in their life you can't buy it but you can connect to it so we must pass the giving test in order to work in financial dominion. We must pass the giving test in order to work in financial dominion. I've been looking at various platforms upon which we can provoke financial dominion. Finally, you look at prophetic platform. Why does prophetic platform pave way for financial blessing? Because, number one, prophets are agents of restoration. Prophets of God are agents of restoration. And you are under a prophetic covering. Every man of God that stands on this altar to minister to you are sons of the prophet. So they, they echo and re-echo the voice, the prophetic sound to make signs out of everyone under that prophetic canopy. So anywhere Winners Chapel is found on planet Earth is under a prophetic covering because this commission carries a prophetic unction. And so anywhere it is planted, the agents of the prophets, the sounds of the prophets, they are only stand to re-echo and echo and re-echo what the prophetic trumpet is sounding from the throne. And as soon as you come under the cover of such prophetic trumpet, you assume the blessing that it carries from heaven. You are under a mandate that makes it compulsory for you to prosper. That's a prophetic sound. If I were you, I would say amen. amen. Instead of looking at me. And so under this kind of platform, this agency, prophetic agency from the throne of grace has unction for your restoration. Hosea 12, 13. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, it was preserved. Your life will be preserved. Amen. They will try you, but they will not be able to get you. Amen. One of us, husband and wife, went to Houston. They are resident in Nigeria, but they came to Houston to deliver their baby. And then she went into labor and then gas off. And the doctor said, well, sorry, yeah, you can pick the baby, but uh, we can organize the body for you. And the, and the husband said, never. My wife is not dead. And he began to pray and called the pastor. And the pastor came and they began to pray. The doctor hung around for some time and said, well, since you guys know, don't have anything else you are doing with your life, see you later. They left them. By the time they came back the following morning, the woman was right on her feet. The Son of God said, I am under a covering. You cannot die. We have sowed seed together. We must eat the fruit. <laughs> we have walked and labored together. No man will eat your own with me. So baby, get up. It's no time to die. And they prayed, anointed, and sprinkled the blood. And then he took communion on behalf of his wife. Since the two of us are one flesh, he took communion. As I take this communion, the blood speaks life. Speaks better things. So life get back. And the wife jack back to life. I'm saying in Houston. I'm not saying Shokoto. Houston. You are under a covenant, a prophetic umbrella. You must not allow devils to mess your destiny away. If you believe human investments yield dividends, then divine investments also yield divine dividends. We are not giving to get, but we are giving in covenant. Did you get what I'm talking about? So prophets are agents of restoration. Number two, prophets are agents of divine rewards. 
For he that receive a prophet in the name of a prophet will certainly receive a prophetic reward. He that give a cup of water to a minister will also receive to a minister in the name of the fact that he's a disciple. He will also receive the minister's reward. Matthew chapter 10 verses 41 and 42. So nothing is done in the kingdom for sure. It's a covenant. Nobody put his money in fixed deposit for sure. It must come back with interest. And if the bank where you invest your money is not bringing the interest, you sue them. Why? It's the law. It's the law. Every time you provoke the covenant, you are provoking a divine law. You are not doing it for dash. So there must be a consistent expectation in your heart of the dividends that must accrue out of your covenant relationship. I have not called the seed of Jacob to seek me in vain. That's scriptures. Get yourself set because life is about to turn around for you. Amen. I said life is about to turn around for you. Amen. Before the end of this year, you will stop living from hand to mouth. Hand to mouth. Amen. As we enter the next quarter of the year, God will begin to open channels of benefits and blessings for you. Amen. Under the prophetic covering, we know prophets are agents of prosperity. There was famine in the land, 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 1 to 25. And God told Elijah, Go and meet this woman. No, the story in 2 Kings chapter 7 is the story of um, the lepers. There was a siege against Samaria, and famine ensued. And then everybody was crying and they called the man of God. Won't you talk? He said, I will have kept quiet because of your stubborn mind. But because of Jehoshaphat, he's a man of God. And then he spoke. This time tomorrow, there will be so much to eat and drink that you wonder whether there was ever a famine. And the king's right hand man said, Ah, you have come again with your watered mouth. Even if God come down, he said, good. God didn't have to come down. But as soon as what I said happens, you will see it, but you will never taste it. You don't come under a prophetic covering and be misbehaving. And then suddenly, mysterious visitation from heaven. And it was lepers who now opened the door for the, for the, for the complete human beings who didn't have sense. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and suddenly, too much to drink, too much to eat. And as people were rushing to collect their own portion, they hit the man who says, even if God come down, he fell down. Before he could stand up, somebody stepped on his head. Another person stepped on his neck. Another person stepped on his chest. And by the time 10 people stepped on him, he died. Why? A prophet spoke. And the change happened. Under this prophetic covering, Poverty will lose power over your life. Yeah. Even if it is a curse. He said, I, shall, I cannot curse the one God has blessed. You have come under a covering of the blessed. Therefore, blessing becomes your beneficial experience. Yeah. Anywhere you are coming from under the sun, you are leaving this place with the rope of prosperity. Yeah. I didn't hear your amen if you know that. Prophets are agents of supernatural breakthrough. Anywhere they come, a breakthrough happens. There was an incident in the book of Extra. Extra chapter 4, Extra chapter 5. When you get home, go and read it. The house of the Lord was being built, and then gang ups came. People rose up and began to harass them. And they forced the work to cease. By force and by power, they make the builders to stop working. Then they called on the prophets. And the prophets came on the scene and began to prophesy. And as they prophesied, Zerubbabel got up and his men. And the building began again. The prophets came to help them. 
You have come under a prophetic help from heaven. The gang ups against your life are losing grip now. Where they say you will never reach, the God of this commission will take you beyond the place. For everyone suffering from gang ups of men and intimidating force from hell, hear ye the word of the Lord. As you rise, they will crash. As you break through, they will break down. Every siege laid against your life is broken now. In the name of Jesus. There's a sound of the prophets in the house. There's a sound of the prophets in the house. There's a sound of the prophets in the house. That hegemony against your destiny is crashed down. That gang up against your career is crashed down. That, that building block of resistance against your advancement is crashed down. In the name of Jesus. 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 Your sign begins from now. Before the end of this coming week, you will hear a phone call. Everywhere they have said, got to go away. They will call you back. They will send for you back. They will call you back. They will, they will call you back. In the name of Jesus. They told you you are not qualified. Oh, but God is the one who qualified the unqualified. Now he has qualified you. Go and take your place at the top. Go and take your place in the breakthrough. Go and take your place in your marriage destiny. Receive your own divine benefits. In the name of Jesus. Every time the prophets appear, something supernatural will take effect. In the name of the Lord, the God of Bishop David Oyedepo, this moment that barrier is crashed down. It is crashing down. In the name of Jesus. That Jordan overflowing the banks of your life is divided into two. Begin to find your way through life. Begin to see your way to progress. Begin to break through in your career. Break through in your business. Break through in your family life. Break through over your children affairs. In the name of Jesus. Aya kasha barosi andalosa. Eman no no kule keni andelebosh. Thank you, Jesus. Now, under the giving covenant, you have a corresponding effect for practitioners. For every practitioner of financial covenant. God has given you a comprehensive life insurance. We all understand what insurance is all about. We are practicing it in different levels. Vehicle insurance, fire insurance, whatever. Some of, many of you, all of you are under one insurance or the other. But I beg to say that those physical insurance used with your physical money to engage in is completely inferior to this spiritual insurance. This is a covenant signed by God, not by man. A man doesn't change. I mean, God doesn't change. But the business company that you sign your covenant with or your insurance with will change. Um, may they not even crash. But there's one that is uncrashable. Is that comprehensive insurance? Am I saying you should go and close your insurance in town? No. I'm saying you should pay better attention to this one. Because this is the one that will secure that one. Any natural investment that does not have corresponding divine investment stand a chance to crash. The one who opposes all things by the word of his power is the one who can uphold your physical investments and make it yield his dividends. Look at this scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 7. 
Oh, hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 14. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. If you are one of them, say amen. amen. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. Amen. To make sure this happens, verse 15. The Lord will take away from thee all sickness. And we know and we put none, say none, none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which you know it will not allow it to come upon thee. But rather, he will move them and lay them upon all them that hate you. <laughs> the haters of your life will be beneficiaries to your troubles. I didn't hear your amen if you believe that. Because the blessings of the Lord make it rich. And add no sorrow to it. So that is the connection between the covenant of the blood and the covenant of the finances. It's from the same source. God redeemed you by his blood but empowers you by his spirit to reign in life. You are redeemed by the blood, empowered by his spirit to reign in life. So when you provoke the covenant of financial dominion through your givings, you are actually provoking the covenant of the blood to spread over your life as a covering. Look at this. In response to your givings in the covenant, God avert plagues, spells, and curses. Avert. Genesis chapter 8, verse 20 to 22. That is the foundation of, of the covenant of prosperity. He said, Noah, build an altar. You remember the story of Noah? The flood came to destroy all men, but God told Noah, build an ark. Put all your family members and every male and female, male and female of every beast, and then they were saved. And then suddenly, after 40 years, the flood assuaged. Dry ground came, and the ark landed on dry soil. All this time, when the rain was falling and everybody was dying, Noah was watching. But instead of drowning, the boat was floating. As the water increased in height, the float also increased in height. So it was afloat, the flood of life throughout those 40 years. When he came down, he was too grateful to be alive. He forgot himself. And he went and took of every clean beast. Now look at it. God told him, take male and female, male and female, of every animal, of every creature, so as to preserve that manner of creature on the earth. Because when the male and the female mate, they produce after their kind. Noah forgot himself. He took off every clean beast. He took one one out of the two two. And he made one. I mean, there's no way a male, a male dog can give birth by himself. But Noah has sacrificed the female dog. There's no way a he goat or a female goat can give birth by itself. Noah has sacrificed the he goat. But wonder began. And God said. You didn't even mind your own existence. After the flood, you didn't mind how you, will, you escape famine. Because if the male and female goat give back, wouldn't they give back to more goats so you can be finding meat? But you have killed one. Okay. I changed my mind. By reason of your sacrifice, the curse on the ground is broken. Mysterious manifestation began to take place. How each existing animal they produce after their kind. It is when we get to heaven you'll find out. But up to today, sir, as men are eating fish and eating fish, fish will never finish. You keep eating animal, keep eating animal, animal, animal. Animals will never finish. You know why? The cause on the ground has been broken. Because of one man's sacrifice. 
one man sacrifice in the covenant one you see something you are going to do something this year that will evoke the cost on your entire household because of you god will cancel the spell hanging around your family you see david is a very sensitive man in the spirit he must have known what noah did so when god caused the nation of israel by reason of their misgivings and plague was killing people over 70,000 people have died david quickly went to look for wisdom second samuel chapter 24 and he went to look for a threshold a little piece of land that's on a high hill and he told the owner can you give it to me i want to sacrifice to my god the man said ah come and take it free in fact i'll give you oxen in the was animals for your sacrifice and david said no i will never give to god what does not cost me something uh -huh. the cost is on me because the cost is on me the cost is on me because the cost is on me i want the cost to be on me so the cost can be removed from me don't, don't give me free he said don't don't be waiting for people to dash you <laughs> you don't know the reason they are giving the givings somebody wants to give a cost away and you are just a dumping ground you receiving causes Somebody is giving sickness away, and all you, all you are looking for is say, dash me, just dash me, just dash me, just dash me. He's just dashing evil away from him, and you are collecting it. That's why I always say, when they give you two dollars, look for somebody else to give one dollar to. In case you transfer something to me, maybe I also transfer to some. You know why we never be a widow? We are looking after widows. Life is not casual. Those who tell life casual die casually. I went to Baltimore to minister in a church, and then the pastor brought a family. The woman just lost her husband. And he has three children. And the husband, the pastor told me, I took them up as my responsibility. Looking after the children in school. And the lady came, knelt down, and, and brought an envelope. So I took the envelope in her hand, and then opened my pocket, and organized some hundreds of dollars. Add to, I didn't open the envelope. Add to it, and then put it back in her hand, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you will never lack money in your life. You will never the flow lack the flow. He says, sir, I'm giving you from your heart. I said, from my own heart. I'm provoking a covenant. <laughs> Except you have covenant sense, you may not enjoy covenant blessings. David said, no, don't give me that. I will buy. And as soon as David bought the threshold, the land, and bought the oxen and sacrificed to God. God smelled a sweet savour and told Israel, No more plague. No more plague. And from that day, plague ceased. The plague, the curse was averted. That's why when you bring the tithe and the offerings, this is what you are provoking. The cost must be averted. If man is obligated to respond to your physical investment with a dividend, God is divinely obligated. You are not bringing your tithes and your offerings for dash. Live in an expectation. I can't be sowing seeds and still be under plagues. Nikulia, Shepos, Opedu, Ikitaya, Covenant, speak. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he a son of man that should change his mind. What he says he will do is all he does. Wake up, brothers and sisters. It's not your kind of person that should be stagnated under any course of life. You sow your seed. You pay your tithe. The causes must be averted. Yes. What 
what happens against number two? By reason of your engaging in the covenant of giving, you are endeared to divine health. Divine health means living a healthy life. Living what? A healthy life. Look at this story in the Bible. In Luke chapter 7, verse 4 to 10. You remember? The Bible says everything that are written here are for our examples upon which the end of the age has come. So whatever you see, practice here. And it brought a positive effect to their life. Plug yourself into it. He said, the sent Jesus came around and then the people came to him. The centurion servant, he's sick, near unto death. And Jesus said, I'm coming to heal him. And people said, no, you shall come. He said, because this man that is lying down there, he loved us. He loves our nation. He has built us a, a, a synagogue. He has built us a synagogue. He can't die. Without him, we have no church. Without him, we have no coffin over our head. We have no suitable place to worship our God. How can he die? And Jesus said, is that what he did? I'm coming. He said, no, 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 no. Don't bother to come to my house. I'm coming. He has provoked a covenant. I'm not sending my word. I'm coming there myself. He built a synagogue. Ah. He has respect for the house of God. I must have respect for his life. He has given what he has to give me a name among men. I must give him what I have to give him an identity among the living. That's the meaning of giving, sir. Yes, sir. So when you give to promote the kingdom of God, to build God a church, some of you come from a village where they are not worshiping God. Why don't you send dollars home and say, build, build something small around my premises. Let people be coming there to worship God. And tell me, then we will send a pastor there. And the generation of your descendants will come out of the darkness. You are sitting here enjoying yourself in America. Build God a tabernacle. Build God a church. Decorate the house of your father. And you will never need to stress to decorate your body. He said, you said he built a synagogue? I'm coming there. I'm coming there. The offering that man gave purchase him life back. That's all we are trying to say. No, no. You see, there are people that it's not easy to kill. Because you don't know the sacrifices and the seeds they have sown. So when you are shooting arrow and it seems as if it's not affecting them, you better change your mind or the arrow will come back to you. Change. Quickly change. Because uh, the secret things belong to God. And you see, relationship with God is personal. Very secret. But people are always prone to problems. Every evil in town answers in your house first before anywhere else. Check your life. Check your seed sowing. Hallelujah. He said he gave to the poor, Psalm 41, verses 1 to 3. He gave to the poor and God said, I will strengthen him. I will make his bed in his sickness. I will go and make up his bed. <laughs> you know why? He's doing my job. I must do his job. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. And we make all his bed in his sickness. You know, sick people don't make beds. That means he has recovered. Glory to God. What happens again? Number three. Giving covenant. Engenders fruitfulness. 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 Remember the story of the Shunammite woman in 2 Kings chapter 4. This man called Elisha is always going and coming, always going and coming, passing through that city, passing through that town. And this woman will always be attending the program. And he says, every time he, they finish program, he's on his way back to his village. He now told her husband, this man that will finish in the night and be traveling in the night, let's make a room for him in our house. Just a bed, a table, and a candlestick. It doesn't take much. So they went to the man of God. Instead of you, you need to rest. After ministering like this and discharging virtue, just come and rest. And the man of God went. 
And after every meeting, he goes to sleep in the room they made for him. Then he, told, he asked his uh, assistant, Gehazi, I perceive this family have a need in their life. Go and ask them, what do they need? And Gehazi said, I don't need to ask them. They don't have children. He said, is that so? He said, call the woman for me. This time next year, you are there with your child. If you made room for me, I must make room for you. That's all God is saying. You gave me a place to rest. Anything that will make your life restless, I attack it by myself. You see, there are issues of life that your academics, degrees, connections, money cannot handle. That's where the covenant speaks for you. That's why I said it is not, don't just only be looking at, I drop $100, mm, $1,000, come back, $100, full, $100. Full. You may never see $1,000, but you will see what $1,000 can never buy. Did you get what we are talking about now? There is no amount of money that can revoke causes. But when you give that little sum, no matter how tiny the sum is, you have provoked the covenant. And when God looks into your life, he sees which area does he have a need. They have held him down. Devil, lose your hold. And then suddenly you discover you are free and you are wondering how. It is that little seed. He made room for me. Gehazi, we must make room for him. I'm a heavenly representation on planet Earth. What does, what does that family need? It's a child. Now have your child. Now see the mysterious thing that happened. She got that child, and the child was growing up. And went to his to farm with his father. And was crying, my head, my head, my head. And suddenly, he fell down and died. The woman didn't cry. You know why? <laughs> the prophet has a room in my house. <laughs> I have the ark of the covenant permanently under my roof. He carried the child and went to Elijah's room, dropped the child there. I, I went to look for Elijah. Elisha, you know I never beg you for a child. I didn't beg you. Uh, the one you gave me, I've dropped him in your room. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Elijah said it's a lie. The blessings of the Lord make it rich. And I had no sorrow. So baby, come away. And the baby got back to life. You will enjoy mysterious miracles this year. Mysterious blessing will answer your way this year. If you believe it, shout the loudest amen. Abraham was enjoying himself in the euphoria of God's blessings. You remember Genesis chapter 17, God began a covenant. By Genesis 18, he was just sitting down in the veranda of his house in the lobby, and he saw two men just dragging their feet. You could see tiredness reaching all over them. The feet was unclean, dirty with the dust, sweat all over their brow, and then he looked at them passing. And he told himself, these people need rest. Or maybe a little food to give them strength. The way they are going, maybe their journey is still long. He said, hello, hello, excuse me. He said, yeah. Can I have your attention one minute? He said, yeah, can we help you? I perceive you are travelers and your journey is so long, but you look tired. I got some food. I got some water. Rest yourself. Relax your soul. Give strength to your leg. And then you can continue the journey. The man said, oh. <laughs> We've been looking for something like this. Thank you. Abraham didn't have to ask the second time. They turned. As they sat down, he brought cold water and washed their feet and told the wife, oh yeah, cook. Told the servant, kill a goat. Before he finished washing, maybe he was using a speed uh, <laughs> cooker. <laughs> the food was ready. They ate all to show how famished they are. But as soon as they finished eating, they look at Abraham. We have not seen your wife. Oh, she's inside. Okay. Tell your wife that this time next year, she will carry her own child. Abraham was servicing angels. He didn't know. This attitude of eating alone, living alone, is not, is not, is not Christianity. Did you hear me say that? Any law in any land that opposes kingdom principles is targeting your destiny. Obey God. 
I don't care where you live. If it is contrary to scripture, you are in danger. And may I announce this in this winner's chapel. If you don't know and have five numbers of five people in this church, you are not a member. Any group you belong, you are in the choir before you travel anywhere. Five people in the choir must know. You know why? They are your security. When they didn't see you one day, they will find out. If one person didn't remember, another person will remember. In case you are caught in a web, in case the enemy wants to push you to a corner, the scent of God will arise and fight your battle. If Peter were all alone by himself, he would have been killed in prison. But the brethren knew when they caught him. The brethren knew when they imprisoned Peter. The brethren knew they were going to kill Peter the following morning. And the Bible says they began to pray. And as they pray, God sent an angel. Bring Peter out. Why? These people won't allow me to rest. They'll be calling my name because of this person. Don't let the devil snatch you away from the place of your dominion. You are a member of this body. You must be a part of this body. Talk to your neighbor and tell him, you are my brother, you are my sister. If he's a male or female. I care for you. I believe in you. I love you. You are part of my life. I am part of your life. In case you are afraid, it's because of your food they are looking for. They are not looking for your food. They are actually God's agents to rescue you from loneliness. They are God's agents to keep you safe from the onslaught of demons and devils. To hear that somebody is a member of this church and does, does not have a house to live in makes me shed tears. Makes me shed tears. We are not poor people here. Even if it, it means I will call my father in Nigeria and say, send money. Because of you, he will send it, sir. Don't let the devil kill you. Behave like a kingdom child. Not an environmental baby. If I hear you live alone, I'll pack my load and come and live with you. <laughs> very serious, sir. Very, very serious. You, you must belong to a group in church or a satellite fellowship in church, your leader must know your number and your house address. And if you don't have a house, tell him. Tell the truth. It's not a shame. We will cover your nakedness. That's what they did in the Acts of the Apostle. He said they were sharing bread from house to house and none of them lack anything. You must not be in this family and be lacking something. You can't find food to eat when there's plenty of food around. What am I using food for? Did you hear the testimony? That was shared this morning. Where's Ayilabo? Mrs. Ayilabo. Oh, she's in the first service. You are not counting room. Powerful woman. She, she can never be stranded all her life. This 21-year-old graduate. You are there. Come, let people see you. That's a daughter of Zion. Hallelujah. God believes in you, man. God believes in you too much. This boy was stranded. Graduate, 21 year old graduate, graduate in a very strange, peculiar field. But then he was an outcast. No house, no food, no money. And Pastor called her. <clears throat> what do we do about this situation? And she answered, What do we do? <laughs> Bring him to my house. What else do we do? If it's you, you say, ah, well, maybe we'll look for shelter. <laughs> and maybe the church can be sending something. Hmm. He said, what do we do? Bring her to my house. Bring him to my house. I read the testimony she wrote. He said, I didn't just stay in a house. I got a mother. I got a mother in this room. They didn't know each other from Adam. They are not from the same lineage. I'm in terms of physical lineage. Is from different tribes. His own tribe is this way. Her own tribe is this way. <laughs> but in the kingdom of God, we are one. Yes. Hallelujah. She took care. Please go ahead. She took care of this boy. And pastor prayed over him. A mysterious door opened. He got a strange job. 
in Wisconsin. One twenty thousand dollars. Wow. <laughs> Twenty-one year old. And her mother said, What will you do with all this money? Say, just leave me, man. Leave me. It's my money. <laughs> because she found a home. He found a home. If you didn't accept him like that, maybe he would have gone somewhere and then they will inject him with, with cocaine. And then suddenly his ear will be looking dirty and then when he meets you on the way, he said, this one, I used to see him in Winner's Chapel. I used, I used to see him. I, it will never happen to anybody here. When you come to share your problem, we don't make public show of you. We take responsibility. That's what Winners is all about. I know where I'm coming from. I know how we treat our people. This is Winners Chapel, sir. This is Winners Chapel. The same effect must happen here. We are going home one night, and Papa saw somebody standing by the gate, sitting on a box. And he asked the security man, Who is that person? He said, eh. He said, He's a member of the church. And I said, What is he doing? I said, He's stranded. And I told him to get out. Papa said, You told him to get out. You told him to get out. Where do you think your salary is paid from? He now called the boy. I was sitting with him. He said, What's happening? He said, uh, I just came to town. I'm a member of Winners Chapel. You know, Shobo, I don't know anywhere. So when I came, I didn't know the address my brother gave me. I couldn't locate it again. So I said, where is Winner's Chapel? Let me go and sleep there overnight, and then I'll find my way. And then when I came here, the security man said, you can't allow me to enter. So I said, well, since I'm by the gate of Winner's, no devil can kill me here. So let me sit down here. And Papa said, enter the car. Enter the car. We branch at the hotel. I went and secured a hotel room for him. Paid the bill, and then tell him, follow me first. Go and come and eat dress well, then come and sleep. At the expense of the pastor. Why won't God bless him? Why, why won't God secure his children? I won't allow any evil to happen to any of his child. He said, I don't know how many prayers I've prayed over my children, but they're all excellent babies. You know why? I'm busy looking after God's children everywhere. And what is it costing me to look after them? Chicken fee. Yet, God is paying costly prices to maintain my own babies. That is the mystery of financial dominion. May you receive it with faith. And then begin to reorganize your system. Where you came from does not matter. Are, are you hearing me? But as long as you are a member of the body of Christ here, you are a part of this family. Very soon I'll be preaching in Spanish. Very soon. Hallelujah. One guy came to me and he was, I know he's, um, he's a Jamaican, but his tongue was so twisted, I, I, I had to tell him, now you pick your word one by one. Because, you see, this is your brother. This your brother has been far away from you. So I have lost touch with your language, with your tongue. So I, I'm trying to get closer back home. Now that we have met each other, we are back home. He laughed. I made him so relaxed. I said, you see, we have traveled far away from each other so long that I'm not picking your tongue anymore. So take it easy. Speak it one by one. I said, because now that we are getting to know each other better, very soon our tongue will be twisting like each other. He laughed and he felt so much at home. And poor his heart. Why? As long as the blood of Jesus is on his life, he's my brother. He's my brother. If I have to remove my jacket and cover his nakedness, I'll do it. He says, whoever gives this person a cup of water in my name, he will never lack flow of life. Is somebody learning lessons this morning? Throughout your lifetime, you will never know the meaning of loneliness. You will never know the meaning of lack anymore. Yeah. Your businesses will go down. Yeah. Your health will be getting better on a daily basis. Because we are servicing ourselves under the covenant. We are servicing ourselves under what? And finally, the covenant endears divine protection. He said, the Lord will hear you in the day of trouble. He will remember all your offerings. So you see, your offerings matters to God. He will remember all your offerings. Psalm 20, from verse 1. 
he will remember all your offerings and your bound sacrifices. So they matter. They provoke God's memory to do something about your case. Your offerings and your sacrifices matter to provoke God's memory to remember something about your case. So you don't have to have incurable disease. There's an incurable covenant that swallow up diseases. He said, because you are blessed above all people, no male or female shall be barren in this land. And the Lord will take away all sickness. That's why this morning, none of you here is permitted to go with any kind of sickness. Rise up on your feet. Wherever that sickness is, if your hand can touch it, lay your hands on it. If it's a kidney problem, a liver problem, or if you don't know where the sickness is, put your hand on your head and say, God of the covenant, the God of all covenant, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, God of Bishop David Oyedeho, let covenant answer now. The covenant of my sacrifices, of my tithes and burnt offerings, let it bring me a cure out of this plague. Revoke the plague. Recover my health. Recover my fruitfulness. Connect me to deliverance. Protect my heritage from evil. Deliver me from danger. The God of Bishop Boyedebo, remember your covenant. For your covenant you will not break. You will not break your covenant. You will not enter, utter anything that proceeds from your mouth. Lord, remember, 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 remember your covenant. Remember your covenant. Remember your covenant. Heal my bone. Heal my blood. Heal my liver. Heal my heart. Heal my eyes. Heal my brain. Heal my emotion. Heal my soul. Heal my body. Heal my mind. Likatosha. Yarakatalia. Lepelusegadia. Akobeluta kundia. Akole. Ikaboto. Ebetika. Karikate. Estokunde mantombre. Ishiangarake. Ekotokundi gibistelega. Heal my business. Heal my career. Deliver my children from the horrors of the demons and the darknesses of the world. Deliver my children. Deliver my daughter. Deliver my son. Rescue him. Rescue her. Bring God, oh God, out of the Jordan. Oh God of all covenant. God of my fathers. I honor your covenant. Remember your covenant. Remember your covenant. Open the door of a new business. Connect me to the mysterious job. Heal my family. Heal my marriage. Heal my body. Kesosiaga. Akosepredo. Omakadia. Eshekenta. Mesususi. Ibelegedo. Obarakati. Esiendos. Oh Jesus. Through the blood. Let the covenant speak now. Manifest yourself. 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 Oh God, manifest yourself. Eliaka soseke. Epekula barate. Giancolo Costa Maria. Manifest yourself. Oh God, manifest yourself. In the name of Jesus. Catosi antro shuma honta mande and lacune malato to jemes is a ketuko brand beyond the star. I stand today in the authority of the God of this commission and I stand under this prophetic unction and I declare that every gate that has locked you down opens now. Every sickness and infirmity that has locked your system down loses his grip on you now. Every lackluster life, every struggling, 
with spell, with curses, with unseen forces that won't allow your life to be. Now in the name of the God of Bishop Oyedepo, the name of Jesus Christ, at whose name every knee will bow, I command that chain to be broken now. Every long hand of evil that be stretching around your fears, hovering over your children, hovering around your business and career, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, eradicate that force of darkness in the name of Jesus. That wandering daughter, come back home now. That wandering son, Return to base in the name of Jesus. That home under stress, peace be still. In the name of Jesus, that business that is struggling to find its feet, I command divine speed, divine speed for progress and advancement. In the name of Jesus, that ailing body, that emotional trouble, I declare joy. I declare healing. I declare health. In the name of Jesus. For every married couple trusting God for a child, the gate is open. The gate is open. Your sacrifice has been received from heaven. And the supply of children is on your way now. Receive your visitation. Like Sarah, receive your visitation. Like Hannah, receive your visitation. In the name of Jesus. The door is open for your favor. The door is open for your progress. The door is open for your advancement. Receive your visitation now. In Jesus' mighty name. Shout the loudest amen if you believe. If you know something has been transferred to your life, shout the loudest amen.